Hey, this is CJ with CommerceCC.com. In this series of videos, I'm going to be assembling the new Team Associated B5M Team Kit. I'm about to start assembling the B5. This is a Team Associated hex driver set that I bought when I uh, built the B4.1 factory team world's car. And it's a combination of standard and metric drivers. The B5 is a real departure for Team Associated in that it's all metric. In fact, the kit only comes with two Allen wrenches, a 1.5 millimeter and a two millimeter Allen wrench. So uh, that's going to make assembling and disassembling, changing things a, a lot easier since you don't have to you know, know every size that this thing is going to fit and have all those different wrenches around. It's a lot easier. There's a lot less switching back and forth between wrench sizes. The kit comes with two suspension blocks, one 25 degrees and one 30. And then, of course, there are the inserts that allow you to change caster at the hub uh, at zero or five degrees. I'm going to assemble the kit with the 25 degree block because... At this time of year, I'm either going to be racing on an indoor clay track or an indoor carpeted track. And the 25 degree, the, the less kick, um, is better for a, uh, a grippier surface. When I start racing outdoors uh, this spring and into the summer and fall, I'll probably swap over to the 30 for the, the much looser surfaces. And I can still get the 30 degrees by adding the, the 5 degree shim. The ball studs that are used for the steering arms are a good bit longer. This is the one that attaches the one of the turnbuckles to the servo arm. These are the ones that are going to attach to the turnbuckles. And those are a good bit longer to provide you uh, room to move them in and out with uh, various size spacers to adjust your Ackerman. A small o-ring is placed over each of the ball studs for the steering arms. This little aluminum spacer gives you the standard Ackerman setting. You can add or swap out this for a thinner one uh, to change your Ackerman settings. The bell crank brace has slightly raised, like almost like a little washer spacer that's built into it, actually formed into the plastic. That goes up, faces up, and contacts the bearing surface. And there's our steering action. When you're tightening these four bolts, you don't want to over tighten them. You want to make sure that there's no play. At the same time, this should be a, a very free moving action there.
pay close attention to the sizing when you're assembling these bulkheads. The front bulkhead and the rear bulkhead overlap each other. There's also some molding tree that attaches these two ends. Make sure that you clean away any flashing on there with an X-Acto knife so that these two pieces fit together nice and smoothly because those edges are very low tolerance. Also, there are five bolts that attach the front piece. Those are a 10 millimeter bolt or screw and the six bolts that attach this to the pan are an eight millimeter. Since all of this is metal screws into plastic, don't over tighten, just get them nice and snug, but you don't want to tighten it so far that you pull the threads out of the plastic. Everything assembles very nicely and it, it looks like it's going to be a very quick build. At this stage of the assembly, you've got the steering rack done, you've got the bulkheads attached to the aluminum chassis, and you should have four bolts left, two tens, and two sixteens. The sixteens go in the two rear holes. These remain empty for the time being. And the tens go up here, mating this nose piece to the forward bulkhead.